Hello and welcome to Fine Arts Channel. This is a video that I've been wanting to put out for a while now, and I'm happy to finally do it today. So in this video, we're going to learn the basics of shading, and uh, you're going to learn how to shade with nothing more than a pencil and a piece of paper. Let's get started. This video is meant to teach you shading in three different ways. The first way is using pressure, the second way is layering, and the third is cross-hatching. Each has its own applications, and um, some are better in certain situations than others. I'm going to demonstrate all three. Let's start with pressure control, because that is something that will need to be applied throughout the entire shading process, no matter what method you choose. So to get started with pressure control, we want to start really lightly, almost so that you can't see the graphite on the paper. As you move forward, slightly add more pressure. Be sure to keep moving the pencil down the paper so that you don't um, get too much dark in one area. You can go back if you want to make an area a little bit darker. Now you can start applying all of the pressure and the pencil will give you its darkest values, just like that. I suggest that you practice this method quite a few times to get the hang of it. Now that we've got the hang of pressure control, we can move on to shading through layering. Shading through layering involves adding multiple layers of graphite to create progressively darker values throughout your piece. To begin, we want to start by putting down a very, very light layer of graphite. Just like that. After this, we want to continue to add more layers to build up darker values in certain areas. For this piece, we want the darkest value to be up here. To do this, we're going to add a layer above this, but instead of going all the way down, we're going to stop short right about there. Keep in mind that I'm not using any more pressure than I have on the first pass. I'm simply layering so that it gets darker automatically. Now we can keep doing this and add as many layers as we want until we've achieved the required value. Just like that. The last method of shading that we're going to learn today is called cross-hatching. Cross-hatching can lead to some very interesting drawings. However, it is my least favorite of the shading methods that we're going to go over today, simply because it doesn't look as neat and as fluid as these two that I've already done here. Cross-hatching involves shading through the spacing of lines. As you can see, I'm only drawing one line, however, because I'm putting them closer together, we have the illusion of darkness on this side right here. Cross-hatching involves making lines just like this, and then crossing them over like that. I'm going to demonstrate how to cross-hatch in the same manner that I have done here. So we're going to put down a bunch of sort of baselines here that we can work off of like that. Now we can turn the paper for uh, ease of use and then start over here and put in our perpendicular lines. Now you may be wondering how do we get it progressively darker across this entire surface and to do that we just make the lines closer together on this end and further apart on this end. We can add more lines like this And to make it even darker on this side, we can even go straight lines like this.
just like that. And now we've cross-hatched a very nice value progression, just like that. And we can see it appears to be lighter over here and darker over here. However, we can also see that the lighter areas are not as fluid as with layering or pressure control. Alright, so we've gone through the basics of all three of our shading styles. And now we're going to learn how to shade a sphere in all three of the styles that we just went over. I'm going to have this image as my reference off to the side here, so you won't be able to see it. However, I will be guiding you through doing pressure control, layering, and cross-hatching on all three of these. I will have a link to this image in the description so that you can follow along as well. Alright, so we're starting with uh, pressure control. And as you can see, the first layer is um, a lot darker than it would be with layering. And although I'm going over and um, adding multiple layers, I am still using pressure control so that I only have to pass some areas once. And of course now I'm just darkening some of the areas that need to be darkened. Now with layering, I'm applying a base layer and then going around and darkening the areas progressively with layers. Of course, now I'm not going over the entire area with layers. I'm filling in patches with layers to make them progressively darker. All right, so with cross-hatching, uh, I'm putting down baselines and then doing the perpendicular lines. After that, I'm just going through and adding lines wherever need be according to the reference picture. And I'm adding lines in all different directions in the darkest areas. Uh, lines in just a few directions in the lighter areas. So that brings us to the end of our shading tutorial. But before I go, I wanted to mention a few things about the three drawings I have here. With pressure control, uh, the darker areas are a lot darker, and so are the shadows compared to layering. Cross-hatching, while having an interesting art style, is a lot less smooth than layering or pressure control. Obviously, each of these has their own pros and cons, and you can pick your favorite and use that in your drawings. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something from it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.